Good morning, everyone. I will start by sh just shortly introducing myself. Uh, my name is Anna Jelicic, and I'm a PhD student in general archaeology at the Department of Archaeology in Stockholm. Uh, my primary research interest lies in the Viking Age burial archaeology, uh, in particular the study of the post-cremation practices of manipulation and circulation of remains, and also um, composition of burial urns. Uh, what I'm presenting today is an overview of a paper with the title Natural Choice, uh, in which I'm dealing with the usage of so-called natural products within uh, post-cremation practices. Among these natural things are also minerals, one of which you can see behind me. Um, this paper is a final product of the workshop Materiality and the Human, given within the doctoral school of in the humanities at Stockholm University. Uh, the main idea behind the workshop was to gather pre PhD students from different fields within humanities and through a series of writing retreats, seminars and presentations, produce and present a uh, publishable paper. My intention was to re-examine and present one quite poorly defined category of objects, the natural products. And you can see uh, text disposition of my paper, which I will loosely follow in my presentation. Well, what exactly do I mean when I say natural products? Uh, in Swedish literature, they are called naturalier, and the boundaries of this concept of natural products is poorly defined. Uh, this one overreaching category is used to encompass a broad variety of these humble objects. Uh, such as minerals, cultivated plants, meadow plants, diverse plant parts like berries, nuts, pine needles, also eggshells, seashells, pebble stones, um, oval stones, fossils, and so on. I'm analyzing the ones which are deliberately deposited among remains. Well, uh, not the ones which are secondary, de describe a secondary deposition. Um, they have traditionally been considered uninterested, not always collected, and with development of different sub-archaeological fields, they are usually used for dating and in discussion of food processing, resource use, climate, health, diet, and similar questions. What I perceive as problematic is that this adjective natural clearly carries some rhetorical weight for archaeological discipline how we engage with things. Uh, natural products are thought to be static, low priority, and hard to use as elements around which one can tell an interesting narrative of Viking Age cremation. The overall agenda of my article is to challenge this description and to put forward a rather active place and significance in post-cremation rituals. Here, here you can see examples of, uh, of one example of how little space they traditionally get. This is uh, just few sentences about hazelnuts and fruits in uh, Greta Arvidsson's Birken number no. two publication. Um, as a point of departure for the further discussion on natural products, I chose Arning and Mound number no. three, uh, which I will refer to Arning and Mound, just Arning and Mound from now on. Uh, Arding area, some 20 kilometers north of Stockholm, was heavily exploited in the early, early 80s. And one of these archaeologically investigated and completely removed uh, ancient monuments was the Arninge Mound, uh, which is not on this picture. Uh, centrally, under the covering stone layer, an impressive undisturbed cremation layer was discovered holding as much as 90 liters of cremated bones. The cremation of the cremation layer is unfortunately really poorly done due to bad weather and uh, some time pressure. Uh, osteological material was analyzed in the 80s as a part of the Monumental Mound project. And this great, you can see it is listed here among these uh, high status, late Iron Age grade, which were analyzed at the time. As you can see, Arninge grave contained remains of five humans and a wide variety of, of other mammal, 
fish and bird species. The richness of cremated bones, both in quantity and in variation of species represented, together with the grave goods of exceptional quality, were taken as an indicator of the high status of the deceased. A compelling narrative of the chieftain burial and possible hum human sacrifice, this older man, young woman scenario was created and published with the emphasis on the high status indicators such as garnet jewelry, gilded objects, gold foliated beads, diversity and amount of animal species and so on. You can see some of these objects behind me. Uh, this narrative of cremation, which was molded around the high status objects and sacrifice, completely dominates the narrative of Arlinge and lives vividly even today in the popular imagination, which is witnessed by this uh, newspaper from 2016, in which Arlinge is described as a place where people were sacrificed to gods. However, uh, quite different quite a different uh, story emerges if we shift our focus from the high status objects placed on the pyre uh, to the material remains of the post-cremation practices. In this narrative, the natural products are the essential element. After the pyre was extinguished, three burial urns uh, were composed and deposited in cremation layer. Uh, the composition of these urns is far from being a representative sample of the richness of material found within the cremation layer itself. They are poor in artifacts and low in bone quantity. Furthermore, all three burial urns contain the natural products in the form of rich plant remains, both, both uh, cultivated and wild species. And also the unburned eggshell or eggs were placed among the remains in two the, of these urns. Um, the choice of plants in urn was of different char character for each urn. While contact of one of them was dominated by wild species, especially barley, the upper one. Uh, the other one was dominated by uh, cultivated seeds, uh, which were different sorts of domesticated plants with uh, also with the insertion of black thorn fruit and hazelnuts. Uh, the samples from these urns were taken only in order to answer some environmental questions and not to debate cremation practices. Thus, natural products are not mentioned in the main report in any significant way. Uh, Arning a grave illustrates, I think, two, two crucial issues for cremation studies a lack of detail in excavation, and lack of interest in natural objects which are perceived as less significant in interpretation and publication of final report. Uh, in my opinion, the natural origin of natural products downplays their cultural significance due, due to this false perspective of, on the inexistence of human impact in their modification. However, I argue that these objects are not actually unmodified. One of the examples I use uh, to illustrate modification are these two minerals I'm holding in my hand, uh, which are found deposited among cremains uh, in two mounds at Kirsta burial ground. Interestingly, uh, well, I did analysis and the analysis shows that these minerals are called tremolite, which is not naturally occurring in Kirsta area. Uh, interestingly, their crystal structure uh, cannot survive the movement of the ice sheet, which means that they cannot be just picked from the surface. They have to be mined or quarried. Uh, and the nearest possible candidate is the mine in Nademura, some 30 kilometers away but they also could have been transported from some destination further away. Now, if we consider all the examples of natural products I already mentioned, like metal plants, cereals, hazelnuts, minerals, eggshells, it is easy to imagine these projects as static, as objects which are just picked up and deposited. But something I think something happened to them from the place of their origin 
to the point of them being a part of burial urn composition. Cutting, roasting, smoking, arranging, harvesting, trashing, cleaning, washing, storing, transporting, quarrying. Uh, a list of these ver verbs, what was done to these objects can, can be long. By the means of these verbs, natural products in interaction with and relation to, to human is apparent. They uh, bear a witness of continuous anthropogenic uh, modification. Uh, in my article, I'm describing a variety of examples which demonstrate, which demonstrate a, wrong, a large range of possible options for the composition and deposition of the Viking Age burial urns. Like these two examples uh, behind me, the one which is quite traditional urn deposited under the lock stone with this combination of natural products, artifacts, and bold, bold material. And also the other, the other example which shows two burial urns deposited on, on the top of each other, under each one under the separate lock stones, again with this separate, uh, this different composition of what is actually in urn. This illustrates how different composition and placement could be perceived as acceptable and efficient, and that placement of natural products among remains was a common sense natural choice in such compositions. To present solution in line with symmetrical approach to material culture of cremation, I'm regarding uh, burial urns as composite products with a context-specific design and manufacture procedure. All the individual components are thus relevant for the composite products characteristic. Thus the natural product, uh, products play an active part and a vital part in construction of a burial urn, which by the observer and or creator in the past was probably perceived as proper, acceptable and efficient for the purpose it was intended to have within post-cremation rituals and in dealing with that in general. Conclusion. <laughs> to conclude, natural products have historically been described, uh, described as natural, unmodified, mundane, static, and thus not considered as significant as artifacts in interpretation of funeral practices and as element of the narrative of the Viking Age, cremation. However, the core concern of my paper is not to dwell upon the history of archaeological archeologi discipline. I have argued that natural products bear a witness of continuous anthropogenic modification and that their deposition among remains was a common sex natural choice in composition of burial urns, thus making them a significant cultural con content. Uh, by highlighting the existence of civic significant asymmetry present in the approach to the material remains of cremation practices, I'm pointing toward the need for the integration of the full range of, of detectable evidence of post-cremation practices in interpretation process and narrative cre creation. In my opinion, this integration is needed in order to enhance and balance this somewhat biased narrative of Viking Age cremation, which is based on artificial, durable, and high status of objects. Um, just short, shortly, this conclusion leads us to my PhD project, which is entirely de dedicated to searching uh, for new means of dealing with our stance to an engagement with material traces of post cremation practices. I'm per uh, in particular, I'm searching for more encompassing ways of approaching the plur pluralism and potency of natural objects. Um, the project's ambition is to explore the usage of natural products in composition of burial loans through the series of thematic chap chapters like selection, deposition, variation, representation, and at the end to hopefully change narrative of Viking Age cremation. Um, that's it. Thank you for your attention.